Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2020 film Bleed With Me. It's a Shudder original, and it's coming to Shudder on Tuesday, August 10th. So because I'm putting this review out before that, and because it's a new film to Shudder, uh, no spoilers in this. I'm going to give like the vaguest of vague synopses, basically, but I will say that if anyone out there has heard or read the synopsis that's basically being put out, by Shudder at this point, it kind of ruins a lot about the film, and I'm kind of of the opinion that I'm not even sure you should watch the film if you've read that synopsis. Uh, in general, this is, and I know some people when they hear this disclaimer are going to be like, I know exactly where the, which way this review is going. Every film is worth watching at least one time. Uh, just because I do or do not like something doesn't mean that you will or will not like it, so the only way you're really going to know is if you watch it yourself. And like I said, every film is worth watching once. That said, I did not enjoy this film. That's usually how I start those reviews. Uh, but I'm going to tell you what was good and what, and what I thought was bad within the film. But once again, you know, it's my opinion. And if you feel differently, certainly put it in the comments because maybe there's stuff I missed I'm not, uh, you know, I wasn't open to when I was watching it, and I'm willing to consider another viewpoint. And I love hearing from people when they say, I like this, even though you didn't, or I didn't like this, and this is why. So yeah, but give me why, that's the big thing. Okay, so Bleed With Me, written and directed by Amelia Moses, who also did the film Bloodthirsty, which I haven't seen, but someone was telling me recently that they were interested in checking it out, which kind of piqued my interest in it. So I might check that out. Uh, Canadian film, this is done in Canada, and like I said, coming Tuesday, August 10th, to Shudder. Quick synopsis, uh, three friends basically go to a cabin when it's snowing outside, and something ha kind of happens. I'm not going to go further than that, because if I try to, I'm going to ruin too much, in my opinion, if you want to watch the film. That's all I'm going to say on that. The opening scene uh, has pretty much nothing going on in it, but it's a really good example of how music can really set the mood, how music can really dictate how you're feeling about a certain scene or even just help you along to get there. And I like the opening scene for this reason because it is a great example of that. It feels nice and inspired. But I will say after that, there is a whole lot of nothing really going on in this film, in my opinion. And I also think that there wasn't enough music. There wasn't enough of an actual score. Now, usually I'm very complimentary to films that have long stints of no music because that allows the audience to just kind of sit there and see how they want to feel about things. It can really increase tension, but there's really not much tension in this film. There's really not much music in this film to help tension because I think more music certain types of music used in certain spaces within this film could have created tension where there isn't otherwise, and that could have been helpful for this film. So for that reason, I'm saying I think there should have been more of a soundtrack to it, more of a score to it. So once again, just my opinion. You can let me know if you feel differently. There's shaky camera issues, and it is pretty bad. It does settle down significantly as the film goes on, so by the time you get to the end, it's a lot less of a problem, but at least early on and about up until maybe about halfway through, it definitely is rough. And this is one of the things I say, we have tripods, people should use tripods, utilize those. I get it when it adds to the scene, when, you know, maybe it's an intense scene and like a little extra movement really adds to that tension, adds to the craziness of what's going on. I get that. That makes sense. But that's not what's going on here, honestly. And especially when it's shots where characters are just stationary, you know, they're just having a conversation and you're just kind of showing a wide shot of all the characters. That should not be shaky. There's no reason that that should be shaky. You have tripods. Please use them. Just saying something that bothers me. The acting is serviceable, I will say, but there are times you can see people thinking about acting and times where you can see people waiting to deliver a line or thinking about delivering a line. Uh, yeah, uh, also the chemistry amongst these actors is not really there. Uh, one of them in, partic in particular, I think, was trying harder than the other two, and it shows, and they just don't they don't mesh. They they just don't mesh. And it creates a lot of awkwardness for the audience members, in my opinion. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but it doesn't work uh, personally for me. 
I do like the way they handled the lighting in this. For the most part, the lighting is very low, and it seems like they try to use or make it seem like they're mainly using like natural light sources within the context of the story. And for that reason, like it's low and it creates a good atmosphere, but it also keeps it looking crisp at the same time. So really an awesome job with the lighting. I really thought they, they pulled that off quite well. There is a scene in here, this is big for people, that animal lovers are really going to be upset about. Uh, that sort of stuff gets to me, and it did with this film, but I also try to kind of separate myself, especially when I'm doing it, you know, watching screener films where, you know, I'm trying to do reviews on them. Um, it was also unnecessary. Like, you didn't really need it in the film. Like, I see there is a tie-in to, I'm just going to say it, wallpaper. There's a tie-in to wallpaper and just take note of that because that is kind of an interesting tie-in but and all, overall story but so I get the reason for it but you didn't need to do it that way so I you know warning to people who are big animal lovers warning the beginning of the film is well okay I wrote that when I was just watching the beginning the film is a snooze fest uh, for me personally, I don't think it feels like much ever really goes on. And like I said, if you've read or heard the synopsis from Shudder or seen a trailer for this film, most likely you're not going to see anything that surprises you or interests you all that much. I'm sorry, that's just that's just the nature of the situation. If you really want to watch this movie and get some enjoyment out of it, you should go in blind. You should definitely go in blind, story-wise. The dialogue is overly short and simplistic, and it makes the characters talk and seem extremely flat. I think that the bad dialogue also kind of rolls into the issue of the chemistry not being there with the characters. Um, writing in general is a problem for this this film, in my opinion. It's, it's a very... I mean, the film's like an hour and 19 minutes. It feels like it's been stretched. It's probably about a 30-minute film, maybe stretched out to an hour and 19 minutes, so it feels insanely slow. It feels like there's a lot of intentional time-wasting scenes that just get stretched just for that reason, and it's not good. It kills any flow that the film could have had. So technically, there are a lot of problems going on with this film, and it starts with the writing. I think there was a good idea for a premise for the film. It didn't come together in the script. Like, you have to have a lot more to it than a good idea. You need to be able to flesh out an entire script that really tells a good, robust story, or even halfway robust. Because in the end, if the end story is good, or if the end, yeah, if the end story and the end kind of twist, whatever you have to it at the end, is good enough, then people can kind of forget a little bit of the slowness up front, or the fact that, you know, it doesn't feel as strong. But this one just... It feels like the whole way through, it's just kind of slowly meandering its way to the end. And like I said, there was a good idea, but it, did, it, it wasn't fleshed out well for the script, unfortunately. And it feels extremely slow. So if you don't like films that feel very slow, this feels unbelievably slow. Uh, I already talked about the score issue. There is kind of a cool scene that's tied to someone taking a shower. So I will say that. If you are going to watch the film, watch for the particular shower scene. You'll know what I'm talking about when you get to it. That looked cool. The way they shot it, the way it looks, the idea behind it, that is a good scene. I, I did enjoy that. Ultimately, this film seems like it is about relationships, but I think there's a large portion, there's actually a conversation where instead of allowing it to be subtext, it is in your face because the characters say it, basically. They tell you exactly what they were trying to tell you, and that's one of these things when, you know, book writing, screenwriting, show, don't tell. And this kind of is telling, and I just don't like that just because it, it makes me feel like you think less of your audience in a sense. I don't know if other people feel that way or not. Um, the film plays like there was a rough idea, but not a, enough story to be fleshed out, yes. Uh, this film actually, while I was watching it, made me think back to another recent Shudder original that I did a screener for um, and a review on, a, An Unquiet Grave. So if you saw An Unquiet Grave, this has a similar feel to it in many ways. So yeah, I mean, 
That's my thought on it. I didn't really like this film. Out of five stars with half stars in play, unfortunately, I'm going to give it a one star rating. I don't think there's a whole lot here to be compelling. I found myself during the film and after the film just asking myself the question, so what? Like that's, And that's what you need to do when you're writing scripts is, so what? You know, this happens. So what? Like, does it matter for the story overall? Is it getting us somewhere? So what? And I kept just thinking, so what? And there were no answers for it with the film. So I just wasn't a fan. But, you know, I wish the best to Amelia Moses, who wrote and directed this. Uh, I think that directorially, there's some really good technical flashes going on there. And cinematography-wise, other than the shaky camera, there were some decent shots there. So directing and cinematography-wise, there's a future there for Amelia Moses, I believe. Maybe just don't write your own scripts. Or write with someone else. Um, just saying. But that's just my thought. Like I said, let me know what you think. Go ahead and put it down in the comments. And you can go ahead and do spoilers in the comments. That is fine. Just know that that's a thing. Uh, do me a favor, though, real quick. Hit that subscribe button if you can for me. And you can because it literally takes you a second. It costs you no money. And it's totally painless. And it really helps me out growing this nerdy horror community I'm trying to build here. And also, it motivates me. It legitimately does. So, I would appreciate that. Also, if you could hit the notification bell button, that would be cool too. Because then you'll know when I'm putting up new videos. Whether it's one of these, or a more in-depth analysis review, or unboxing video, or any of that stuff. But, regardless, I really do thank you for taking your time to watch this. And until next time, keep it brutal.